Did he have rhythm? Yeah, he had rhythm, right? Uh-uh. 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 One element was uh, Nikita Khrushchev, the former Soviet premier of uh, the Soviet Union, slamming his shoe at the United Nations. So something that I knew exists, I had seen, there's no images of that, but I heard about it, read about it. And so I knew as a kid of the uh, a television kid born in the 60s, right, the fear box uh, 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 from the generation of the television. I, I always was mesmerized how the world was divided between East and West. Not much has changed, but for me that was sort of something that had always been explored in the previous films. The slamming of Nikita Khrushchev's shoe on the desk, what I did not realize when I started researching that, that had to do with our Belgian colonial history. And researching more and more, I was like more and more baffled and I thought, wow, this is an interesting story. This is sort of a, a black page in our history, or a page that is actually not very known. Or at least, maybe for a younger generation, it becomes a topic of, of, of debate. But it was less so when I grew up in school, I never learned about this history. And so all of that was sort of at the inception of the beginning of this film. Rhythm is my business. The juncture in this film, in the story, is where music crosses over onto the political stage, with the case of the jazz ambassadors, we, we can talk about, and how, how, um, how vice versa that affected one another. So there, there's, I think, within what I was researching, music was inherently part of that story. So, for example, when Louis Armstrong is sent to the Congo as a black jazz ambassador to whitewash sort of American politics and to push democracy as a propaganda tool abroad to win the hearts and minds of the people of the Global South. You know, underneath, while Louis Armstrong in October 1960 and November 1960, he was twice there. Um, there was a coup being staged underneath by the CIA and also Belgium of the first elected, uh, democratically elected government of Patrice Lumumba, but also the plotting of his murder. And that's happening while Louis Armstrong is in the Congo. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting, because you have soundtrack, right? And then you have a coup d'etat. And in a sense, they summarize what the film is about as well. Dizzy said, you know, we didn't go out there in the world to sugarcoat domestic segregation. You know, black Americans could not vote yet for, for, for their own government. So in the meantime, they send out black jazz ambassadors, so it's very hypocritical. You have Milton Obote, the Ugandan president, in the film saying, you know, how can we believe America when actually inside they're still repressing blacks, they're still lynching blacks and while they're propagating democracy. And so, for them, a propaganda tool was sending out black jazz ambassadors to see, you know, see, we're not so bad. Anyway. <laughs> so that's the, the soundtrack to Okurita. And so, again, it's the music that actually is crossing over into the political stage, the global, actually, global world stage of politics. And again, it's, it's, for me, it's that again. The, the film ends with a scream, but it's, it's a soundtrack, but also a coup. So it's a counter coup within the Security Council where this sort of archives is, has become a protagonist in all of my films. Also the music is a protagonist, but the archives as well. But there's is, there is four protagonists in the film, of which three of them gave us home, home movies. So you have Sergei Khrushchev has shot a lot of home movies when Nikita Khrushchev was uh, that's the, so the former Soviet premier. Sergei Khrushchev gave us all the home movies that he shot in the Dacha. So that's quite interesting and we could use it as well as the memoirs. So we had first-hand access to Nikita Khrushchev's sort of, uh, sort of biography and memory and, 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 and footage from his home movies. C'est toi-même, Chroma, qui m'a demandé de lancer un appel aux femmes africaines. 
pour qu'elle contribue à l'unification du continent. En imaginant une nouvelle entité politique, les États-Unis d'Afrique. André Blouin, uh, her daughter Yves Blouin, sent her sort of this undeveloped reel of film that we developed, and so the whole movies of André Blouin also made it into the film. And then Jean Bofani, Jean Bofani, Encoli Jean Bofani is the Belgian Congolese novelist that is featured in the film. The story of Encoli Jean Bofani is quite interesting. He was kid his mother was kidnapped by his stepdad, who was a Belgian colonial the rubber baron. And he stole his mother and forced him to marry him. That still happened at the time. But he was a kid and it became his stepdad. But Monsieur Cass, his stepdad, happened to have a film camera. And so there's a lot of home movies that were shot by his stepdad that we could so generously use, like we could use about John, John Bofani said he has a very ambivalent relationship to that imagery as well. But he said you could use it. And in the dialogue with him, we went back and forth. We used this, this footage. And so we have this home movies for me is already an interesting aspect because to have those intimate images jammed between the bigger political picture of a murder on a global scale, because for me, the, 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 the murder of Patrice Lumumba is a bigger story. It's also the global south is waking up. And you have the non-alignment movement in Bandung, where Sukarno invites all the global south leaders to, to join in, in a discussion to say, we're fed up with East and West and this nuclear holocaust is about to happen. We want sort of a different story. And this is happening in the 50s. And then when Nikita Khrushchev invites all those leaders to the to the General Assembly in the United Nations, sort of that Global South, with including 16 newly independent countries being admitted in that year, the year of Africa, 1960, that makes this a big shift within the United Nations. And so I, I, I always feel those intimate sort of visuals of those families that are jammed between bigger politics is a very interesting visual story also to tell.